What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be showcasing the complete guide for the Prestige Difficulty Nightfall for the week of September 12th to the 18th, the Inverted Spire. Now please note, although this is technically for the 300 power level Prestige Difficulty Nightfall, it's really just the same version as the 240 power level one, but just harder. So if you are looking for a guide on the normal Nightfall, this video will Will work just fine. And so let's get started. Firstly, the modifiers for this week are number one, prism. So the elemental burn is going to change every 30 seconds, more or less. So that means that you need to have all different elements represented. Your subclass should be a certain element, let's say void. And if it is void, then you need to have an energy weapon that is arc or solar, and then a power weapon that is, let's say your energy weapon is arc, your power weapon should be solar. All three elements would be represented then so that there isn't a burn where you're just doing basically no damage. A powerful kinetic weapon is also quite good because you can still take down basic enemies with your kinetic weapon. It will usually take a little bit longer. In addition to that, the time warp modifier is time warp rings. Unlike last time where you killed enemies to gain more time, this time killing enemies does nothing essentially aside from keeping you alive. What you're actually going to have to do to gain more time for this nightfall strike is to go through the vex rings. You're going to go through a ring and more will spawn. Going through each one gives you 30 seconds. It doesn't matter who goes through, one person goes through equals 30 seconds. That's really all there is to it. And so let's go through this nightfall step by step and give you guys a ton of tips for how to complete it. Now upon spawning in, you're going to want to get through the beginning section as quickly as possible. Killing enemies doesn't give you bonus time and there's no vex rings until actually quite a bit. So just get through this area as quickly as possible. Run up to the objective marker and kill all of the vex and the cabal nearby for it to trigger. You can scan it with your ghost and then continue on. You're going to be shot through a man cannon to the next area. Simply kill the big bad guy that can kill you fast and then run past all the other enemies you can. You can certainly spend time killing enemies to ensure that you and your teammates are safe going through an area, but that does expend time. So make sure to kind of split the difference. Kill the more powerful enemies and try to run past the rest. After this beginning section, you'll notice that respawns are restricted and you have the first real encounter of this strike. It has you with a bunch of enemies in front of you and yet a vex ring right beside you. Now this is very important because once you go through this ring, it will trigger the rest of the vex rings to spawn. And again, going through them gives you 30 seconds for your time. So you really want to wait. Wait until you've cleared out an appropriate amount of enemies before going through that initial ring. You can wait on that ring indefinitely, it won't go away. Once you trigger it, however, the rings will go away after a certain amount of time. So the best strategy is actually to send one or two teammates down to fight all of the enemies below. Keep one guy with a scout rifle up at the top. You can see that we didn't do that. I had a hand cannon and basically could do nothing. So don't do what we did. Get a guy with a scout rifle to stay up here and actually be able to help your teammates. But once your teammates do clear out an appropriate amount of enemies, essentially most of the minotaurs, your teammate up top can start to go through the rings. Now if only one teammate is up top, he will be able to go through around three rings and that's kind of it. If you do leave two teammates up top, they can get, as you can see, a bunch of different rings in a bunch of different directions. You can't really get back up to this location. Quite frankly, we ended with so much time, this part really didn't matter too, too much. So it's really just up to your squad to decide how you want to take on this section. Now moving on from that section, you're going to next skip a bunch of enemies. Run past all of these guys on this semi-jumping puzzle, hit the ground and whip out a sparrow and speed past a bunch of Vex and Cabal enemies until you reach the next objective, which is to kill two of the gatekeepers essentially that will then open up yet another man cannon. Now a couple of important things to note. Number one, once you get to this area, all of the guys behind you will just despawn. Number two, once you kill the two objective bosses, 
all of the enemies around you will despawn as you can see in the background gameplay. So once you do kill these enemies, most guys are going to despawn and then you're going to have free reign to trigger the first Vex ring. A bunch more will pop up, send one teammate left, one teammate right, and one teammate to deal with the ones in the middle. If you hit all of them, you'll gain a ton of time. So in order to do this strategy properly, you're going to need to send some teammates with really good power weapons or fully charged supers to deal with those two objective bosses so that you can despawn everything else. Next up, you're going to activate and then get shot through another man cannon and we have a huge tip coming up because at this next part, it can be a little tricky, but you don't actually have to do it. Send just one teammate down to activate the objective, which will move the next man cannon into position. And while that's happening, you can just sit up top here where you see us sit up top. All of the enemies are down below, but they can't do anything to you. Once it reaches 100%, drop down. Be aware that there are going to be those cabal meteors that drop down right in front of the man cannon so kind of go around it to be safe but then just get shot through there and you're on to the next part. After that you speed through a bunch of enemies again. You can actually even whip out your sparrow here and then once your team is down by the mining apparatus you're going to split up essentially one person in the middle lane, one person at the top lane, one person at the bottom lane. You're going to activate that initial vex ring. It's going to spawn a bunch more and get as many as you can. Now because some of the rings are actually kind of on the lanes that the spinning arms of death reach, uh, you're going to want to maybe expect some deaths, which is totally fine as long as you get some decent time by going through enough of these rings, one person gets to the other end, he can simply drop down and trigger the joining allies mechanic for the final boss fight. Now this final boss fight for us was ridiculously easy. What you need to do to absolutely tank the boss is to time your DPS essentially. If you have multiple Voidwalker Warlocks, wait until it's Void Burn and then slam him with your Nova Bombs. That'll do a ton of damage. More likely though, let's say a lot of you guys have good power weapons or fusion rifles is a great example. We were using the Merciless Exotic Fusion Rifle. That thing is insane. If you do have it, get as many members of your fire team to equip it. Wait until it's solar. Absolutely go to town. But even if you don't have that and you have a normal fusion rifle, what you can do is use a Titan's Rally Barricade set up when it's solar burn or void burn or whatever burn that your fusion rifles are and absolutely go to town. Every time you duck below the Rally Barricade and come back up, it will automatically reload your weapon. So you can just get a ton of damage on this boss if you're doing stuff like that. Don't forget that Warlocks also have empowering rifts that make you deal more damage as well. But also remember that you can't change your abilities for your subclass or weapons in the Nightfall if you're doing the Prestige difficulty. So absolutely unload at the boss when he first spawns in. He's going to be in that beginning area for a decent amount of time before he starts teleporting. And then once you do see the immunes popping up, you know that you've triggered that phase. You're going to drop down, go on one of these different cylinders here, group up with your team, cast an empowering rift or and a healing rift, and then go to town again, as you can see us do. It's going to drop down one more time once you damage him enough and then finish him off with whatever burns it is. Now we made it look pretty darn easy because we are quite a high power level. If you are having trouble with this, a tactic you really want to use is to time your use of DPS properly. Don't be popping your super or unloading with your power weapon at the wrong times. When you want to utilize that stuff is firstly coordinate with your teammate to hopefully have everyone do that stuff at the same time and you want to do it number one at the beginning of a phase. You don't want to pop your super just as he's becoming immune and going to the next phase. That's a huge loss of damage. So you want to kind of wait. If you didn't have the opportunity to pop your super, it just charges halfway through. Wait until the next phase so you get all of that damage in. And another thing, you really want to wait until the right burn pops up. Do not use your supers, do not use your power weapon, anything like that until you see the proper burn pop up. So if you have the Wardcliffe coil, make sure that it's saying that arc damage is active before you start shooting it. Otherwise, you're wasting a ton of damage potential. 
And guys, that's really all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. I don't do giveaways or like goals, so honest, genuine people who enjoy my content is all I have. So thank you for the people who are those. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.